Assalam o Alaikum and very good morning grade 7 we will proceed to our next topic and that topic is pollination but before that we will do labeling and I have played a game for you so receptacle then leaf then I should play sepal oh yes it's correct okay now I'm going to add petals where are petals they're red color no no yes that's done now I should go for the female reproductive part stigma is the top then style is the neck of the uh, couple then the swollen bows base is the ovary ovary has many ovules base ovule yes that goes fit perfectly now I will label the male part reproductive part of a flower anther is the yellow sack with pollen grains and filament is the stalk of anther that's it okay now you have to learn this diagram by your heart okay pollination the topic is pollination to make seeds a flower must be pollinated what is pollination the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma okay it is done by two types and their types are called self pollination or cross pollination but before that I'm going to tell you what are the agents pollination is done by many agents one of them is insects Insect pollinated flowers are mostly brightly colored and scented. They have nectars like the geranium flower that allows many insects to visit it. These insects may be butterfly, these insects may be the small um, mason bees or etc. We say flowers are very beautiful but they are genius too. Some flowers are constructed so that when an insect lands on them, the weight of the insect's body makes the stamen jog down covering the insect's back with pollens. This will help the pollination a lot. One interesting case is this flower that ripens and looks like a bumblebee. The flower looks like a female bumblebee. When a male bumblebee sees the flower, he tries to come along and get trapped and gets more of the pollens of the flower and transfer them to the other flowers. So, isn't it a great tactic? A clever one? Now we will study about the wind pollinated flowers. So the flowers that are not looking so beautiful, they are mostly pollinated by wind and these flowers are uh, grasses many large trees they don't have bright color petals or nectar they don't have even the scent the pull of the wind pollinated flower is very light and it blows easily why why do you think so because they should be blown off easily by the wind that's why they are very light and they are produced in large amount these flowers stigma are feathery and they catch easily these light pollen grains and this also helps in pollination. Here is the table of insect pollinated flowers and wind pollinated flowers. The differences are clearly told here stigma like sticky uh, in insect pollinated flowers so that it can catch the uh, pollen of insects and the event pollinated flower stigma is sweaty so it can uh, catch all the blown away wind, wind passing pollens to it now comes the flowers which are pollinated by birds this hummingbird looking lovely it's sucking the nectar and meanwhile it is also doing the pollination it is transferring the pollen grains from anthers to the stigma isn't it lovely one more strange thing is for you pollination is also done by bats can you see this bat it's from Nat Geo uh, while movies and this bat is uh, doing what it is coming to the flowers and it is pollinating them because bat pollinated flowers are often large and bell shaped white or pale colored and they open their petals at night 
These flowers usually produce large amounts of nectar and give off a smell that attracts the bats. The pollen sticks to the fur of the bats' faces and bodies as well as feeding on the pollen, nectar and other parts of the flower. The bats often uh, transfer these pollens to other flowers. Bats get insects to eat too. Dear students, now get ready for your written task. R take out your journals. Write question number three. Insect pollinated flowers produce fewer and larger pollen grains than wind pollinated flowers. Explain why this is so. So the answer is insect pollinated flowers have fewer and larger pollen grains because once an insect has been attracted to the flower and eaten some of the flower uh, pollen grains or nectar, there is quite the high chance that it will accidentally carry some of the pollen grains to another flower of the same species in this way it will help in pollination okay by contrast the wind pollinated plants have to rely on the wind carrying pollen grains to another plant of the same species the pollen grains have to be very small so that they blow along easily they have to be very many of them because most will be wasted so wind pollinated flowers have to create their pollens in large amount and they should be very very minute and tiny after writing this answer question number three answer in your journals you have to learn that as well it is also obvious that you can also put your bright ideas here right now we will do question number four if you are growing plants such as cucumber or melon plants in a greenhouse where insects couldn't enter, how would you make sure that all the flowers were pollinated? Okay, have you written this question with a blue marker neatly in your journals? Okay, now answer, guess the answer, what will be the answer? The answer is being practiced for many centuries and it is in a greenhouse where there are no insects cucumber or melon plants often have to be pollinated by hand artificial pollination okay a stamen or a small paint brush bearing pollen is rubbed again against the stigmas of the flower so that fertilization can occur so the farmers also do this technique use this technique in pollination and fertilization of their uh, crops they rub these stamens and they use the uh, po uh, paint brush bearing pollen that is helping it okay you have to learn these all questions question number three and four and you also have to learn these basic facts i am putting here the pictures the flower contains the plant's reproductive organ there are four main pa uh, parts to most flowers they are sepals petals stamens and carpels the sepals are green and leaf-like they protect the flower in the bud the petals when present are brightly colored to attract insects these were the four first four basic facts now we will learn fifth uh, basic fact that is uh, these stamens are the male parts of the flower they each consist of a filament and an anther which contains the pollen grains the carpels are the female parts of the flower they consist of stigma style and ovary pollination is the transfer of pollen from a stamen to a carpel during self-pollination pollen is transferred from stamen to stigma of the same plant uh, during uh, cross pollination pollen is transferred from the stamen of one flower to the stigma of a flower on an other plant okay these two definitions are to be learned very well now uh, is our insect pollinated plants have brightly colored petals scented flowers with nectaries sticky stigmas and pollen grains which are large and sticky on the other hand wind pollinated plants usually have dull green flowers often without petals no nectaries and they have long feathery stigmas okay so Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant. The diagrams are shown here and they are showing both types of self-pollination. Okay.
Now we will show cross pollination is the transfer of pollen grain from the anther of one flower to the stigma of an other flower but of the same species or same kind. Now here in this picture uh, arrow A and arrow B is showing self pollination and arrow C is showing cross pollination. Okay, keep growing the plants around you. Take care of the pollinators. They are not only the birds, they are not only the butterflies, they are not only the insects, they are the mason bees as well. So always help the plants to grow and always take care not only the plants, also the family members who are around you. Take care. Allah Hafiz.